Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, Operations Manager at Emerald. This is the Emerald Blockchain course, Class 5, What is Ethereum? Ethereum was created by Vitalik Buterin. He's a younger developer. He was not part of uh, the cypherpunk movement, but he was part of the Bitcoin movement since early. And he was always working on how to add smart contracts to Bitcoin. Uh, but because it was techn technically very difficult, he decided to create Ethereum. He had the idea in 2013 of how to design a blockchain and a decentralized network, uh, which would add smart contracts. Ethereum is the same base as Bitcoin. It uses proof of work as the consensus mechanism and security, and it also has accounts and balances. Uh, but uh, the addition is that it adds programmability. Bitcoin has a fixed monetary policy, like I explained in the previous class, uh, since the beginning. Uh, in the case of Ethereum, it had a monet monetary policy since the beginning, but they have changed it several times. So that ecosystem has demonstrated that they're flexible in terms of uh, uh, monetary policy and they have indicated that in the future, if necessary, they would change it again. Ethereum, um, the Ethereum ledger stores accounts, balances and software programs. These software programs are uh, normal software programs that developers can, can create and send to the network. Um, and uh, they once they are sent to the network, they become decentralized and they, be, they, they can create apps inside the network and that's why uh, Ethereum is programmable. The way Vitalik achieved this was by adding these four things. First, the virtual machine. The virtual machine is basically a software component of the software of Ethereum that can execute many operations very similar to a normal computer. And this software component is replicated in all the machines of the network. It's called the Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM. The other thing that Vitalik added was a programming language, uh, which is called Solidity. Of the 30 million developers in the world, there is a very large share that know how to use a program, programming language called JavaScript. And Solidity is basically JavaScript modified a little to be able to work on a blockchain as Ethereum. So many programmers in the world find it very easy to use Solidity. The other thing that Ethereum has that Bitcoin doesn't have is state transition. Bitcoin basically to know the ending balance of an account, you need to check the whole history of transactions of all the transactions that point to that account. It's called the unspent transaction output system or UTXO system. Uh, in the case of Ethereum, when someone sends a transaction to move money from one account to the other, basically it debits one account and it credits, credits the other account. So it's not necessary to, to check the past history of transactions. And this enables uh, computing and, um, and, and it's something that is normal in computer science and it's the way that, that programs work. So, so it solved that part of the, of the puzzle. And lastly, uh, computers, when they execute programs, many times we, in our phone or, or our computers, they, they can't finish execution and we have to turn them on and on again, or we have to close the application and open the application again to reboot it. That wouldn't be possible in a blockchain because it would introduce centralization, because it would introduce uh, central authority that has to tell all the nodes and machines uh, in the world, Ethereum has around 6,000 uh, peers in the, in, the, in the network globally. Uh, um, so introducing a central authority that has to tell everybody to reboot their machines or reboot their Ethereum application uh, would introduce centralization. So the way Vitalik uh, solved it is by creating the gas system per transaction. So anyone who sends a transaction to Ethereum to execute a program or just to move money, they also assign a limited amount of gas, which is a quantity that when all the computers in the network receive it, and if they try to execute the transaction and it uses up the gas, 
then they just stop and return the money to the sender and the sender can send a transaction again to try to execute it uh, again. Um, so in this case, it's solved by, by doing, by using that strategy, it solved the halting problem, uh, which is a common problem in, in computer science. So all these things combined enable applications, what we would call apps, uh, but when they are sent to Ethereum, they become decentralized. So we call them decentralized apps or dApps. One important thing that is happening in the history of Ethereum, and I would say it's very significant for the history of the blockchain industry in general, because Ethereum is the second largest blockchain in the world, is that it's moving from proof of work as the consensus and security system to proof of stake. Proof of stake um, is good in the sense that it enables much more scalability. Blockchains as Ethereum today in proof of work and Bitcoin, they have a limited capacity to process transactions. Uh, but by moving to proof of stake, it opens the way to increase capacity and compete with all the systems of, uh, of the world that they process billions of transactions transactions per day. Um, so they're sacrificing a little bit of security but increasing scalability by moving from proof of stake to proof of work, while Bitcoin and other blockchains such as Ethereum Classic are staying uh, with proof of work forever. Thank you very much for watching this uh, Emerald Blockchain course, Class 5, What is Ethereum? And uh, please remember to download Emerald at emerald.cash slash download. Thank you very much.